Hey everybody and welcome back to another Think Geo tutorial video. Today we're going to go a step beyond where we started in our Think Geo UI for WPF quick start demo, the one that has a nice base map of the world's countries. And we're going to add a shapefile feature layer containing the world's capital cities and we're going to overlay that on top of our base map. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and opened our original project that we started with. And uh, you'll also see that I've added a shapefiles folder to the map. And inside there is a capitals folder and a world capitals shapefile. The .shp actually contains the features itself. And that's what we're going to add to the map. Right after we add the raster base map overlay, but before we refresh the map, we're going to create a new custom data overlay. And this is a layer overlay. And then we're going to create a new layer, which we'll call the capital layer. And that is a new shape file feature layer. And into this, we're going to pass the path to that file, worldcapitals.shp. Uh, the next thing we need to do is on this capital layer, because the world capital shape file is actually in the decimal degrees projection or coordinate system, but our map is using Web Mercator, these are incompatible coordinate systems, but we can easily convert from one to the other by using the capital layer dot feature source dot projection converter and creating a new projection converter that goes from the decimal degrees projection whose EPSG ID is 4326 to the Web Mercator whose ID is 3857. And that just takes care of that for you. Uh, now, if we were to add this overlay to the map, we wouldn't see anything yet because we don't have a style on it. So we're going to create a style, which we'll call the capital style, which is a new point style. That's because the world capitals layer is a point-based shape file. And we will use an object initializer here. And we will set some properties. So first of all, we're going to set the symbol type for this uh, shape file. And we're going to use our standard point symbol type collection. We'll just go with a simple circle. There's some other choices we could pick. Uh, we're going to set the symbol size to be 8. And now for what that circle looks like, we're going to first create a fill brush, which is another geo solid brush, into which we'll pass a simple geocolors.white, because we want a white circle here. And then we also want a black outline around the circle, so we will create a outline pen, which is a new geo pen that takes a color, geo colors black in this case, and a thickness, which will go with two pixels here. Now we have our style, but we need to attach it to the layer. And here's how we do that. We're going to say capital layer dot zoom level set dot zoom level 01, which is as far out as you can possibly zoom on the map. And we're going to set its default point style equal to that capital style that we just created. So that will make the, the circle show up the way that we want for the capital cities at zoom level 1. But you're not going to spend a lot of time at zoom level 1. So how do we get it to apply to the rest of the scales? Well, that's also very easy with a single line. We're going to say capital, oops, capital layer dot zoom level set dot zoom level 01. Apply until zoom level. And we'll set that equal to apply until zoom level dot level 20, which is as far in as you can zoom. And this simply applies that style, or copies it if you will, to all the zoom levels on the layer. Now we need to add that uh, layer to the custom data overlay. So we'll say custom data overlay layers collection add capital layer. And finally, map view overlays add custom data overlay. Now, if we go up to debug and start debugging, what we should see is our WPF window with our base map. And on top of that, we now have circles that represent the capital cities of the world's countries. And this is combining local feature data with our cloud-based tiles. And that was really easy to add. Now, there's one more thing that you might want to do here, which I'll show you. You might remember from part one where we added this uh, current extent that was set to a very large rectangle so that we could see the entire world. What if you had some feature data that just covered a town, for example, and you wanted the map to start up showing the extent of that feature data? Well, that's pretty easy also. So we're going to go ahead and comment that line out. Now that we've added that custom shapefile feature layer to the map, we can do this. Let's go ahead and 
select capital layer dot open. So this basically opens the layer for us to access its features programmatically. And now we're going to set the current extent of the map view to capital layer dot get bounding box, which gets a rectangle that encloses the bounds of all the features on that layer. Finally, we'll just close the layer again. Now, if we debug this, we'll see that the map starts up, pull that window down here, it starts up in such a way that all of those circles can be seen within the, the window extent. If we come over to our main window XAML, we can make this a little bit bigger. Let's say we made it 1200 by uh, 900, for example, and we started that up again. We should be able to see now that our map starts a little bit zoomed in further. Yes, as you can see, because now the window's larger, and so it can zoom in a bit further and still show all of those features there on that point layer. And that was it. That was how easy it is to add a shape file to the top of your base map. And you can add features from shape files, from databases, from just about any feature source you can imagine. And if there's a special file type that you need support for, you can add it yourself. Simply extend the feature layer and the feature source class and you have your own custom data source. That's just one of the many things you can do with ThinkGeo UI, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. Stay tuned to ThinkGeo for more tutorial videos, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.